It's Thursday, May 5th, and this is now on HNN. So much for the good feelings on Wall Street. U.S. markets fell sharply today, wiping out yesterday's gains following that news from the feds on interest rates. There's been a lot of discussion about destination management. Governor Ige will travel to Japan in hopes of setting a new tone for bringing visitors back to Hawaii. We always say that owning an oceanfront home is uh, not for the faint of heart. Sea level rise is changing the real estate industry in the state. Those new details are coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. This is now we've got a lot of news to get to today. That's right. Wall Street goes into reverse, erasing much of its big rally yesterday. That's today's talker story. U.S. markets fell sharply today, marking their worst day of the year and erasing all the gains from yesterday after the Fed's announcement of its plans to increase in its benchmark interest rates won over investors. But today, investors woke up with a binge trading hangover and markets catapulted into the red as they further digested the Fed's news. The Dow fell 1,063 points, or 3.1%. Tech stocks fell the most, pulling the NASDAQ down 5%. And the S&P 500 pulled back 3.6%. Will the Senate please come back into order before going to final reading? The state ledge is wrapping up its session today. Lawmakers are expected to vote on a few remaining measures, including the bill to give $600 million to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands to build more homes. That would be the largest one-time infusion of state money to the department. Another major accomplishment this session was increasing the minimum wage to $18 an hour by 2028. Senator Maisie Hirono says she's frustrated with her Democratic colleagues' unwillingness to change the filibuster after the leak of that Supreme Court draft opinion on Roe v. Wade. Here's some of her interview with CNN, new at noon. What do you say to your Democratic colleagues who are not willing to either change the filibuster rules to pass this bill? I hope they change their minds when they realize the damage that is being done to a women's autonomy in our country. I can't even think of a comparable thing that we can do to men that even comes close to forcing a woman to have a child. Can you? You have to convince Senator Manchin, who also opposes well, abortion I'm rights. Hopeful, I, I am hopeful that at some point when the reality of this sinks in, because women in our country have counted on this constitutional right for almost 50 years, that reality sinking in, I hope will change some minds. And if it does not pass next week? And I tell you, the women and others who support autonomy for all citizens, because this really is a constitutional civil rights issue, that they will go to the polls and express their outrage appropriately. We're going to need to elect a lot more pro-choice people and all levels of government, including the United States Senate. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is making a lot of countries rethink their security. And because of this, the U.S. may get two new military allies as early as this summer. Ian Lee reports. Finland and Sweden are racing to protect themselves after Russia invaded Ukraine. More than 100 U.S. troops are training with NATO allies in Finland this week, a show of strength to neighboring Russia. We're going to find a way to keep things peaceful. But Sweden and Finland are not part of NATO and wouldn't be protected if Moscow chose to invade them next. It is uh, actually a horrendous time with the Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine. That's why both countries are considering a NATO bid. Standing together strongly for democracy. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the U.S. backs their membership. But the Kremlin warns if the Nordic nations join NATO, Moscow will move their nukes closer to Finland's border, a threat that's giving a sense of urgency to joining the alliance. 
I think it's everybody's interest that different countries would move as fast as possible. That would be the best security guarantee that we could have. Sweden and Finland say if they join, they'll do it together. A decision that could come as early as next week. Ian Lee, CBS News. Delta Airlines has announced it's reducing access to its exclusive Sky Clubs. The move is an effort to cut down on crowding inside the popular airport lounges. Delta says it's seen high volumes of Delta Sky Club visitors due to so many people returning to travel this year. The members-only lounges offer free food and drink and a comfortable space for sitting around. So from now on, Sky Club members will be restricted restricted to access only within three hours of their departure. And they won't be able to stop in the lounge on their way out of the airport. The only exception will be people flying Delta One business class. The new restrictions take effect on June 1st. Have you heard about this one? Police say a passenger at O'Hare's International Airport pulled the emergency exit, walked out onto the wing, and then slid down onto the airfield. Let's turn things over to Michelle Gallardo with those details. This whole incident is just bizarre. This was an overnight flight that was arriving from San Diego. It was just around 4.30 in the morning when Chicago police say that basically a man on the plane essentially pulled the emergency exit door. He got out of the plane onto the wing of the plane and then slid from the wing onto the airfield. Now, that is when, according to the United Airlines spokesperson, um, they say that it was their ground crew who stopped the individual outside of the aircraft and the person person is now with law enforcement. The plane then arrived at the gate and all passengers deplaned safely. Now what is not clear is what exactly led to this happening. Police do tell us that charges are pending against this person and the operations at the airport were not impacted as it was all brought under control rather quickly. Airbnb says it's putting strict new rules in place to crack down on unauthorized parties at rental properties during the summer holidays. The company said users without a history of positive reviews will not be allowed to book a home for only one night. Bookers will also have to confirm they understand the company can take legal action for breaking the rules. The restrictions come after two teens were killed at a large party held last month at a property in Pittsburgh rented through the app where many of the guests were minors. Airbnb says the new rules will be in place for the Memorial Day weekend as well as the 4th of July. The state is prioritizing the return of Japanese visitors not only to boost the economy but to set a new tone for Hawaii's tourism industry. There's been a lot of discussion about destination management and, and not just getting more and more uh, visitors here. I think we all recognize that Japanese visitors are are ones that we want, you know, they tend to uh, engage the community. They are very, very respectful of um, Native Hawaiian culture. Governor Ige is planning to travel to Japan next week. He's hoping to have a direct meeting with the Japanese prime minister. Hey, I'm going to be talking uh, to them about um, um, treating Hawaii differently than the rest of the United States. Um, you know, don't know how successful I'll be, but really talk about the notion that, you know, Hawaii has the lowest infection rates in the country. Uh, and, you know, the fact that um, many still continue to wear their masks. Governor Ige also said on the Star Advertiser's Spotlight Hawaii that he wants to negotiate a special travel relationship with Japan. The Hawaii Tourism Authority says there were 1.5 million Japanese visitors in pre-pandemic 2019, spending more than $2 billion. Last year, there were only 24,000 visitors from Japan. This week, Hawaii saw a bump in Japanese travel due to Golden Week, but the numbers were still well below normal levels. Governor Ige will be holding a press conference today at 1.30 p.m. We will be streaming it live on all your H&N digital platforms. NOAA reports for the first time in more than two decades, the monk seal population has surpassed 1,500 seals. They estimate that the number of seals has been climbing for the past two years and has trended upward overall since 2013. But keep this in mind, low pup survival rates in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands continues to be a concern. Well, the threat of sea level rise could change the way real estate is bought and sold in the Aloha State, 
Casey Lund joins us now to explain. We're talking about that rule that we actually told folks about uh, when it went into effect on May 1st. We told you about that on Monday, diving a little deeper into it uh, to see how it's going to change things for realtors, essentially needing to disclose uh, the potential risk of sea level rise up to 3.2 feet, mostly along coastal areas. I want to introduce Bill Ward um, from Corcoran Pacific Properties, Hi. a realtor. Bill, thank you so much for being with us on this beautiful morning here in the North Shore, though, uh, hoping it doesn't <laughs> rain, but we'll see. <laughs> hey, I so wanted much. to talk to you, Bill, about this uh, new rule, a uh, partnership between the DLNR and UH, and um, what it's meant to do and who it's meant to protect. Right. So basically, as you stated, it's become mandatory that we disclose and sellers, as they're going to sell a property, disclose if it's just within the sea, uh, sea rise level of exposure area of 3.2 feet. That actually projects out, I believe, to 20, the year 2100. But in a worst case scenario, what could it do? Um, the interesting thing is, if we kind of saw from some of the maps, it actually covers some of the houses, not just our ocean fronts, but houses that go one or two half back, perhaps even as far as Cam Highway or beyond in some areas. And of course, the focus a lot of times, especially for us <laughs> in the news, we come up here where you see those dramatic images of home, that home falling onto the sand. Uh, but this includes places on the South Shore, Waikiki. Really, again, when you look at that map from the state, uh, it, it's the entire island. It, it truly is. Uh, in fact, all islands. But we're looking at the map this morning. And yes, of course, the North Shore is, is, is definitely exposed. You look at places like Eva Beach, it goes all the way back to Fort Weaver Road. You looked at Maile on the west side, it goes past to Farrington. So that's covering more than one or two or maybe even three or four homes. So very simply, I want to ask, uh, will this make things harder for realtors to sell those properties? <laughs> or do we assume it's a, a normal disclosure, like saying uh, whether or not a home has mold or, or another issue right. that you have to disclose? You know, it really depends on that particular buyer's um, risk tolerance. You know, uh, we always say that owning an oceanfront home is uh, not for the faint of heart. Um, but you know what? It's one of those things we absolutely want to disclose it. We certainly, as you've seen, we've seen dramatic homes fall into the ocean. Folks need to know when they're purchasing a home. Is this something that they can live with? And I'm sure they'll dig in deeper and look at some of the research and kind of go, what does that mean? And what does that mean for my home in this area? Because every neighborhood and micro neighborhood is so different from the next. So it may affect, you know, even one or two blocks down, may be very different than the one you're looking at here. So they're going to want to know that. All right. Casey Lund reporting there this morning on Sunrise. Hey, guys, a warning. Mother's Day, days away. Yep. Are you ready? Yep. Sure, Mom, I'm ready. It's in the mail. I promise. I was just there. I saw my mom last week. It was a great trip yeah. home to Illinois. But one thing here on the islands we need to watch out for is the weather, of course. And Guy Hoggy is standing by with a first look at your Mother's Day Sunday forecast. Even through tonight, there will be some showers for some windward areas pretty much statewide, but those showers will be light and they'll be moving along because we'll have that those breezy winds. And then by tomorrow morning, we're expecting drier conditions. But keep in mind, even though it's going to be drier, we're expecting cloudy skies through tomorrow before sunshine takes over over the weekend. And then early Tuesday morning, another weak front comes in with a few more windward and mulka showers, but those showers should be of the light variety. So we still got big surf, right? High surf advisory continues for all south shores. Cloudy skies today and tomorrow. A few windward and mulka showers as well. And those breezy winds will hang on into the middle part of next week. And then over the weekend, you expect more sunshine. And the shower activity, again, will be limited to a few windward and mulka showers in the overnight and early morning hours. Well, the Rainbow Warriors volleyball team has another big game today in the NCAA semifinals. Kyle Chinen has a preview from Los Angeles. Aloha again from the Poly Pavilion here on the campus of UCLA, where it's game day for the Rainbow Warriors men's volleyball team as they're set for a rematch with Ball State, this time in the NCAA semifinals. I'm excited to be playing against a, a really good Ball State team. Obviously, we saw them earlier in the year, and they are uh, you know, a talented veteran group. Hawaii made it into the semis after taking down the Crusaders in a sweep. Now set for a rematch with BSU after they were on the wrong end of another sweep earlier in the season. However, they were without three key starters in Jakob Tella, Chaz Galloway, and Guilherme Voss due to some illness and injury. Even though we didn't have three starters, we didn't have Guilherme, we didn't have Jakob, and we didn't have Chaz, uh, I think we fought really hard, and uh, it was like at the end of the season that we, we lost it. You know, we, lo we lost some points. And, uh, yeah, we should, uh, we should have worked harder, and, uh, yeah. Now at full strength, they want to leave their last meeting with the Cardinals in the past. 
looking to show them what the Rainbow Warriors really have to offer. I don't think that part's really relevant. You know, it's not, we're not the same team clearly, and it's been a long, you know, season, and uh, I'm sure they've evolved too. So, um, you know, tomorrow's a, a totally different matchup and, uh, and two really different teams. And for the players that weren't available for their match in Muncie, it's personal, wanting to show out after watching the loss from the couch. It was uh, gruesome. Both me and Jakob were, uh, we lived together, so we were at home watching the games and having to uh, be watching that and not affect it at all. But now we're all here and uh, we'll have a proper matchup again. So I'm glad to be here and be able to have this rematch with them. It's showtime. First serve tonight is set for 4.30 Hawaii time, 7.30 local time. The match will be streaming exclusively on NCAA.com. We'll also have highlights in later editions of Hawaii News Now. For now, reporting from Los Angeles, I'm Kyle Chenin for This Is Now. Kyle wearing a pretty heavy coat for Los Angeles. I just checked the temp. It's a high of 75 today. So yeah, and kiddo went to skin. school in Iowa, so... He just I mean, wanted to flash the H and N here. Maybe it was raining. Yeah. It was a rain jacket. It, it was a little. It was a little gray. <laughs> All right. Let's see what the internet is talking about today. Yeah. So meet the winner, you guys, of Gerber's 12th Aww. annual photo search. Oh, she's adorable. This is Isa Slish, and she's the company's 2022 spokesbaby and chief growing officer. Now she was born September 18th. She's a Virgo, 2021 in Oklahoma, and is the first Gerber baby with a limb difference. Now, her mom says she found out at 18 weeks into the pregnancy that Isa would be born without part of her right leg. She says she hopes Isa's story can bring more awareness for limb differences and create greater inclusion for kids like her. So the spokesbaby designation comes with $25,000 nice. in cash, which the family says will be used for medical expenses. They'll also, of course, get free Gerber products, for a year. That would really help out as well. She's so cute. Yeah, especially oh. with inflation, cost mm -hmm. of food, 20, mm -hmm. all that money, food. And there's a baby food shortage, apparently. Yeah. There's a shortage of everything. And cat food. <laughs> I just heard Howard and them talking about it this morning. Yeah, everything, you're right. Dracula okay? Uh, oh. I think so. Okay. He, it's, he doesn't get as much wet food. I think, actually, it is the dry food in the shortage. There's plenty of wet food, uh -huh. so he might get an upgrade. All right, so. good for him. What else you find? Well, if you're looking at the large, oh, this is what you're looking at. Oh, it's the largest huh? discovered work of cave art in North America. So get this. It's located in a secret cave not found on any map, and the art is actually invisible. So I'll explain. So the cave is located in Alabama and stretches over three miles, and the cave art, which measures 11 feet in length, dates back as early as the first millennium AD. It's virtually unseeable to the naked eye. So scientists used a process called 3D photogrammetry. So after taking thousands of photos, they were able to recreate 3D models of the hidden mud glyphs on the cave's walls and ceilings. Now, some of the glyphs reveal intricate detail, and there is a simple snake drawing that has experts really excited. Yeah, we see it right there. Yeah. It's pretty fascinating, I mean, that they were able to do that mm -hmm. with technology today. In Alabama. Of all places. Yeah. Well, I've got a fun story and discovery as well to share with you. Check this out. It doesn't look too fancy, but it's super cool. So this is what it is. It's a massive two- Point three eight carat diamond, a man found in Arkansas, known as a brown diamond. It was discovered last month at the crater of Diamond State Park. It's about the size of a pinto bean, and it's worth though ten thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. The man already sold it to buy a car. <laughs> yeah, and it isn't his first find. He's also found hundreds of smaller diamonds in the past decade. He says he's going to keep looking in hopes of finding an even bigger one. Well, look at all those people behind him looking. Yeah, I've heard of people doing this at this place, at this state park, and it does sound fun if you find one, but can you imagine spending your entire vacation looking for a rock that looks like that and right. then finding nothing? It looks like a rock to me. I wouldn't have even Yeah, I known. wouldn't have spotted it. Mm-hmm. Right. Some good news now. Yeah, President Biden hosted Team USA at the White House where he celebrated America's Olympic and Paralympic athletes who competed in the recent Summer Games in Tokyo and, of course, the Winter Games in Beijing. How hard it was for them and, uh, and for you that they couldn't be there in person with you. 
Our favorite part of the Olympics, Jill and my family, was watching your families watch you. I'm not joking. Watching your families watch you, learning about who you are, because we learn about how big and diverse and talented, how great this nation is, just how diverse we are. The pandemic made training and competing especially difficult and draining. But you did it. You all did it. We were in awe, not just of your incredible athleticism, but your endurance and your state of mind, but most of all, your character. Now, among the crowd of nearly 600 athletes were several Hawaii Olympians, including Heimana Reynolds, Jordan Barrett, and Sakura Kokumai. Now, more than 200 athletes were medalists in the Games, and this is the first time Team USA had been welcomed to the White House since the pandemic. Cool. I love seeing our local athletes there. And it just seems like yesterday when we were doing our Olympic yeah. shortcast, I can't believe it's been that long since then. And still rocking their Team USA gear, looking great there in front of the White House. Yes. All right, we got some more sports news to get to. And this is a huge viral video. I have not seen it yet, but I hear a lot of people talking about it. It involves the Yankees and a home run and a young man's reaction to that home run. Here's Michael George with that story. This Aaron Judge home run Tuesday night in Toronto kicked off a week young Derek Rodriguez will remember forever. Caught by a Blue Jay fan, and he gives it to an Aaron Judge fan. Nine-year-old Derek tearfully hugged Blue Jays fan Mike Lanzalotta in a heartwarming moment that went viral. I wanted to not make a big C because I was like, wait a minute, it's going to appear all over TV. But I couldn't hold back my tears. He wrapped his arms around me, and it just... I just had like an overwhelming feeling of joy uh, and elation. I wouldn't ever give up that moment for anything. The exchange even captured the attention of the slugger himself. That's passion right there. That's Yankee fans right there. Both the Blue Jays and Yankees fan got another thrill when they were invited into the Yankees dugout Wednesday for batting practice before the next game. Once again, young Derek shed a few tears. Judge signed the ball and gave the boy a pair of his batting gloves. Well, that's what's special about this game, man. It doesn't matter, you know, what jersey you wear. You know, they're everybody's fans. Um, everybody appreciates this game. And there's more to come. The Yankees have invited the Rodriguez family and Lanzalotti to Yankee Stadium later this season to watch a game from the judges chamber seats in right field. If you were in the stands and there was a Blue Jays fan, would you would you do the same thing? I'll do the same thing, you know, because, you know, I'm already old enough. Not mine, you know, I don't need to shine anymore too much, but for the kid, it's more for the passion for the kid, you know, so I felt like that was a, that was a great thing to do, you know. Derek says he and Lanzalotta are now friends forever. Michael George, CBS News at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Great story. Oh, the feels. I yeah. love it. That's always one of my biggest fears, though, a home run ball or, hit by or, or a foul ball <laughs> coming right at me. I mean, my hands were probably filled with, like, hot dogs and beer uh -huh. and all that stuff, so I don't know what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> like, ah. yeah. And my hand-eye coordination, not the best. Not the best. Oh, that's awesome, though. I love it. You guys, that's it for This Is Now on this... Oh, it's Thursday. We're almost there. Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo, yes. Hope you get your happy hour on out there as well. Ashley's back first at 4. Don't want to miss that. That's on KHNL. And again, again, uh, don't want you to forget, we have a 1.30 press conference coming up with Governor Ige. He's going to discuss a lot of wide-ranging issues and taking questions from a number of reporters. We're going to stream that to you live on your h and digital platforms. You don't want to miss it. And don't forget, also, we're podcasting all the time here at h and Just search Hawaii News Now wherever you get your podcasts. You guys have a wonderful almost Friday afternoon. Bye-bye.